question is there is a significant community of Crimean Tatar Muslims resident in Crimea who don't seem to be happy. Can you shed some light on that? In fact, they're about 12% at this time. The Crimean Tatar appear to have come to Crimea with Genghis Khan, the Mongols. And they lived in Crimea for hundreds of years. They once were the dominant people in Crimea and they established the state. It was called a Khanit. They were the government. It is very, very sad and regrettable that they allowed themselves to be taken for a ride by the Ottomans. The Ottomans wanted slaves. <laughs> they wanted slaves. And if you brought the slaves to them, the Ottomans never asked how you got it. <laughs> the Ottomans paid you for the slaves. So the Tatar, the Tatar economy <laughs> was based on raids which they conducted mainly in Russia, eh? they were very fierce horsemen and they would they would start off from Crimea with incredible speed incredible speed and about one week's time or four, four or five days time you would not believe where they would reach and then when from that point they will start returning back to Crimea and as they're returning back they're mopping up innocent people who have done no wrong and you simply attack them and seize them and enslave them one day you're going to pay a price for that that's oppression that is zulum and Islam has zero tolerance for oppression the Russians could never forget that the Tatar did this for hundreds of years and Russia did not have the power that the Ottoman Empire had. The Tatar were clients of the Ottoman Empire. So the Ottoman Empire will defend the Tatar. Hmm? Crimea eventually became Ottoman territory controlled by Ottoman Empire. Eventually, when the Soviet Union came into being, the Soviet Union began the persecution of the Crimean Tatar to force them into communism. And then in the, in the First World War, they suffered because Germany was not Nazi as yet and Germany took Crimea in the First World War. So they had to face the Soviet army and they had to face the German army <laughs> in Crimea. And they were, they were killed by both sides. When the Soviet Union took control of Crimea, then they continued to suffer under Soviet tyranny. And the Soviets were always reminding them, you are the ones who to be enslaved people. Slave raiders, they were called. But then in the Second World War, Nazi Germany, Hitler, they took Crimea. And the Crimean Tatar, who had had enough of Soviet oppression, they didn't mind who it was who came to take, to take away the Soviet army, they welcomed them. <laughs> They had suffered enough. So they welcomed the Nazi army, the German Nazi army. And when the Soviet Union defeated Germany, then Stalin decided one day that's all they got. And Stalin took all of them and threw them out of Crimea, expelled them, 
to Siberia and Uzbekistan and other places. Hundreds of thousands died because of that. And they suffered and suffered and suffered. When the Soviet Union collapsed, then they started trickling back. But before that, when Nikita Khrushchev became General Secretary of the Soviet Union, the Communist Party, he decided, he declared that this was wrong on Stalin's part, that these people should not have been punished in this way. But he did not allow them to come back. No. It is only after the Soviet Union collapsed, only then did they start coming back in small numbers. So most of them are still outside. But what the mistake that they made was to forget the sins that they committed. Forget the sins that their fathers committed. The second mistake that they made was to be incapable of distinguish, distinguishing between Russia and the Soviet Union. They could not recognize the Soviet Union as a Zionist creation. They could not understand the Quran, which prohibited you from relations with such people. So the hatred they had for the Soviet Union, they kept on that hatred with Russia. And so when the all the circus started in Ukraine, the demonstrations and so on. The Tatar Muslims were at the front of it against Russia <laughs> to bring a pro-Western government to power in Ukraine. Russia showed great patience with them when Russia took over Crimea. Putin acted with great wisdom and grace as a people who are in alliance with your enemy, in alliance with NATO. And Putin said, we will try to help you to get back your properties and make you live comfortably in Crimea. And we recognize the Crimean Tatar language as one of the official languages of Crimea. The Russian government acted beautifully. The Crimea, I sent two messages to them through my website. Got someone to translate it into Russian. And the Crimean Tata, I warned them. I said, the Zionists are going to come now to get you to accept weapons. Saudi Arabia will send the weapons and the money to commit acts of terrorism against Russia. I said, you must go to the Quran as your primary guide. You must not do that. Do not have any links with them. If you commit acts of terrorism against Russia, you'll be thrown out of Crimea. You'll never see Crimea again. And number two, the world of Islam will never support you. I said to them, if you refuse to commit act of terrorism, then the Zionists will themselves commit it and blame it on you. <laughs> but at that time, you must disown it and condemn it. Otherwise, you get the blame. I'm happy to report that the Majlis of the Crimean Tatar Muslims have now decided that it makes more sense for us to try to work out an understanding with Russia rather than confrontation with Russia, yeah. Any more questions? This is a very interesting subject. With much more to come in the future. I'm studying it. Any more questions? Yes.